We have five circles here. Four are identical. They're smaller ones. They have a radius of seven and they're inside of this large circle. Okay. With just this information here, can we find the area of the large circle? Pause this video, see if you can solve it. But as always, we're going to dive in and I'm going to show you a way, well, to solve this problem. All right. First thing I'm noticing here, let's look, notice the tangents. We got tangent, 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 tangent of the circles on the inside there. Let's label these circles as well. We have A, B, C, and D. Let's connect these circle centers. The circle center sounds like a, I don't know, cool place to be where all the cool cats are. A, B, then B to C. What do you think happens after B to C? B to C, well, C to D. A to the B to the C to the D. Back to the A. All right, let's have some fun with this. We have A, B, C, D. We have made a little connection between them. I'm also here at each point of these, well, tangent, tangent, tangent on the inside. I'm going to draw a line that goes right through the center of the circle. This way, if I can actually draw. And let's do the same thing vertically. Okay. And, you know, I did my best with the circles, as you saw. It's kind of hard to draw circles. Especially on a whiteboard. Or a light board. All right. So what do we got here? We have some tangent lines here. Okay. And one thing we notice about the tangent to a circle theorem means the radius is going to be perpendicular. So we have a little perpendicular stuff kind of going on all around, oh, not there yet, well, right here, and on the inside. With that being said, these are perpendicular the way we drew them, so that's going to be right there, right there, right there. All of these little squares, and I guess add them all up, we have perpendicular on the inside. It's just all these perpendiculars. They have a side length, each one of, let's call it little r, r being the radius of the little circle, okay, or small, the small circle, how I laid it up here. So r, little r is a radius of, well, that little circle right there, and it's a side length. Notice we have a square, four squares on the inside which make up one large square, just like our problem, four circles on the inside make up, well, the big circle, except clearly. It's not the same area if you add them all up. Oh, right. So now with this, we have R, 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 R. I'm going to draw another line. What am I going to do that for, Sean? Well, let's connect A, C, but continue to the points of tangencies at the end of the big circle right there. Boom, boom. Let's call this, uh, we're at E, and we are at good old F. Okay. So, if I can find the length of E, F here, then I can find, well, big R, which is the radius, let's call it, of the large circle. Hence why I had to change it to small circle instead of little. Can't label two circles, L. Anyway, so the R is the radius of the large circle there. Well, how can I find the length of E, F? Can I find the length of A, C, though? AC being on the inside. Let's make a little triangle. Think of triangle ACD. ACDC. What do we know about it? It's a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. How do we know? It's isosceles. We have R here, 2R, 2R is the length there, 2R. So AD equals DC which is a 2R, the length, right there. And since this is a 90 degree, the other two corners must equal 90 degrees, which is 45 degrees. What do we know about 45, 45, 90 degree triangles? Their side lengths have a proportion of A, A, uh, two square root of A. If I remember correctly, look at my notes, just double check. Da, 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 boop. 
Yeah. Oh, a squared two. See, I, I always messed it up. I could edit that out, but that would, wouldn't be authentic. A square root two. Always mix things around. All right, I'm trying to be authentic here for you all. So if a, in this case, is two r, that means the length of a c, that hypotenuse, is a two r square root of two. Okay. All right. All right. So what's the length of e f? E f is equal to that 2r square root 2, the length of ac, plus the n's here, which is just a radius and a radius, so it's plus 2r. All right? Now, I want the radius of the big circle, okay? And the radius of the big circle, well, it's going to be half of this, because that is the diameter, ef is our diameter, so half of this, of 2r square root 2 plus 2r, we do half of that for the radius. You should know the formula there. And big R is equal to the twos cancel out with these twos, and we have R square root two plus an R. Now, luckily for us, oh, whoa, whoa, what did I do here? Oh, let's just keep going. Let's keep it in terms of R. We'll we'll reveal it at the end. The area of a circle is pi times a big R squared, and we know the little r's. So it's pi times r square root 2. What? Don't forget the parenthesis there, Sean. Not too bright. Plus a little r squared. All right. Then multiply this out first. At uh, this point, I just put the 7s in. So area equals pi times a 7 square root 2 plus a 7 all squared. And this comes out to be, oh, area equals pi times approximately, Sean, we're now approximating a 16.8995 all squared. And so let's go area equals, I'm going to keep this in terms of pi for the moment, pi times a 285, this is 16.8995 squared, a 5.59 three one which equals, where can I put this final output up here? So our area is approximately all the way up here, 897.2172 units squared. Don't forget it's units squared, everybody, because we're dealing with area here. Can't forget that. Anyway, we got 897.2172 units squared. I was really hoping this was going to come out to be like, you know, something nice, like, you know, 30 pi or something, but it didn't. But hey, that's life. We got the area of the large circle here, and it's at approximately 897 units squared. Is that what you got? If so, great. If not, I hope you learned something here, and that's really the point of this video. So, as always here, thanks for watching.